Hello everybody, as you can see I'm knee deep in snow. Now one thing that's also a problem is that I only have my 24 to 70 millimeter lens with me and this is a place where you would need a 100 to 300 or 100 to 400 millimeter lens because everything is really far away and you have small details to photograph. So what am I doing here? I'm currently hiking between Mala and Vilica Planina, the small plane and the big plane. They um, herd cows here for the summer and it's basically, you know, like a cottage village or something like that. Now, because the snow is reflecting the blue sky, all the shadows are going to have a blue tint. And because the sun is going to be a little bit orangey, then the highlights are going to be orange. So I'm going to have that natural orange and blue contrast. And you know, what better place than here? You know, I actually want to take a photo of that church over there with the mountains in the back, but I would have to be way over there. Now, even though if I was up there, I would still not be able to get the framing that I want because I only have the 70 millimeter max lens. And with the, with the G9, I have 120 millimeter full frame equivalent because I have a 12 to 16 millimeter lens on top of this. On the Sony, I have a 24 to 70, which I find is completely useless in a situation like this. Okay, so what is the most rookie mistake that you can possibly make? Well, it's not bringing the correct lens or the right focal length lens. Yeah, so that's like rookie mistake number one, definitely, that you can ever make. You know, but regardless of that, I'm gonna limit myself maybe just to a little bit of a wide angle photography. You know, because I'm here. I mean, the mountains back there are just awesome. Seriously. You know, I think there's actually a chance that I'm gonna miss the whole lighting situation, which is kind of frustrating, although, you know, I mean, I, I did have a beautiful hike up here, so it's not like I came for nothing, but I really wanted to show you guys this place in, a, in the best way possible. Yeah, that's like as close as I can get, you can see in this photo, uh, with a 70 millimeter lens. Now the settings I'm shooting with are pretty much f11 all the way. f11 and f16 because it's way too bright because everything's really white and having that f11 or f16, if I have the sun in the shot, I get that starburst, you know, which you get from f11 and onwards. Cool. So it makes no sense to shoot wide open because with these white highlights and shadow contrast on the snow, you're gonna have a lot of um, chromatic aberration if your lens is not okay. You know, I don't really know why, but I find myself photographing this scene like from every angle. I think it's this lovely cottage with this lovely fence and the waves on the snow. I mean, it's just wonderful. And the church in the back and the clouds shrieking over. I think that's as good as it's going to get because the clouds are creeping in and I'm definitely not getting the golden hour I'm looking for. And I don't want to be here when it gets dark because it's freezing. We're at 1500 meters above sea level and it's minus 10 degrees already. So yeah, let's get back to the studio and see what we got. Now, even though I only had a 24 to 70 millimeter full frame standard zoom Sigma lens, I still managed to capture a couple of interesting shots. Now, the one I'm mostly interested in is this one with the little church and the little fence and that color contrast in the back between the blue sky and the highlights of the sun, which are a little bit orangey. Now I'm going to work on that to really emphasize the color contrast, but I also first need to work on the framing. I need to get this church in the position where I want it to be. I'm gonna do most of the edit in Lightroom and I'm gonna use the new advanced masking features that I've added to Lightroom version something something which really brings it really close to what you can do in Photoshop. For the end touches we will go in Photoshop and add a little bit of the final glare but first I really want to separate the highlights from the whites and from the midtones and make them a little bit orangey. For the shadows I'm gonna go a little bit with a more blue kind of tone to really emphasize that orange and blue color contrast but of course the main topic is the framing of the shot. So with a little bit of masking and playing around with the colors I end up with an image that looks like this. Now I'm going to open this up in Photoshop and add that high pass filter sharpening which I typically do on my photographs and add the Orton glow or Orton softening effect. Now this is done by just copying the layer and adding Gaussian blur. I go typically with around 40 pixels and I use the overlay blending mode. This way it kind of softens out the image. Of course I'm going to just add maybe 20 or 30 percent of this effect and before this layer I typically put a brightness and contrast adjustment layer and just tone down the contrast to not make it that 
that poppy. Now if I group both of these effects layers together, turn them on and off, you can see the little bit of softening difference that this effect does. For the final touches, I'm gonna add my watermark with a little bit of a shadow, and I'm going to add the white framing that I typically do to get the square format from all of my images. I add a little bit of the shadow to the whole image to kind of separate it from the background. In this way, I get a square format, which I can post on my Instagram page and my up and coming website, which is still in development. I hope you guys enjoyed this little photo shoot and edit. And if you have any comments or questions, leave that down in the comment section. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, hit the like button. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.